All right, I think I'm live. Hi guys, I'm Michelle. And um, I'm just gonna hang out here for a second and then we'll get going. Um, so just a couple of caveats. We have this rural internet, which um, is glitchy and not that great. So, <laughs> uh, also the weather is pretty crappy today. We have a lot of rain, and so hopefully that doesn't cause any technical difficulties. But just a fair warning. Hi, Nikki. Okay, so should we get started? Um, I'm Michelle Marine. I am a blogger, content creator, uh, family travel writer. We wear a lot of different hats um, at Simplify Live Love. And um, you can find me at that handle on Instagram and Facebook and uh, Pinterest. And then for Twitter, it's Simp Live Love. There weren't, weren't enough characters to let me put my whole blog name in there. Anyway, I want to say thank you to Sarah and Lisa for inviting me to do this live today, this takeover of the Midwest Travel Network page. Hi, Victoria Tor, good to see you. Um, just so you know, I don't do a lot of video. This makes me kind of nervous. And um, talking about myself is fun, of course, but um, I don't really know. <laughs> <laughs> what you guys want to know, what you want to hear. So I'm just going to tell you the story of how I um, started, how I became this person who loves to travel and, um, and ended up in Iowa. So we'll just get started. Um, if you have questions, let me know. Please interrupt me, say hi, comment um, in the section, the comment section here. And um, and interrupt me because I like that. I don't like just talking to myself. I'm sitting in our barn office behind me. I have pictures of the barn that we're sitting in and um, the story for that is interesting how it ended up to be here. Also a transplant like myself. So um, we'll start when my family moved to Germany when I was six and a half years old. My dad uh, got out of the Air Force and joined up with the Army Corps of Engineers. He was a civil engineer and we moved to Germany when I was six and a half. Since my dad wasn't active duty military, we weren't allowed to live with the military people on the Army base. We were in the Heidelberg area. So we had to live on the economy, which meant um, off base. And my parents found a house that we lived in um, that had a family and um, through the daughter of our landlord, I learned to speak German. So because we were in Germany for almost eight years, we traveled a lot. We traveled you know, all over Europe. The nice thing about living in a country like Germany is you're an hour from another country. So it was super easy for my family to hop in the car and take us to Switzerland or Austria. We um, traveled to France a lot. My mom was actually a French teacher. so. Um, so from a young age, we were traveling all the time and, um, we loved it. I have that one younger sister and we really enjoyed Germany. We liked it a lot. We didn't want to move back to the States. So when I was about ready to start high school, my parents started seriously thinking about, uh, what to do about that. I hope you guys can hear me. Okay. Everybody can hear me, right? Oh, um, if you can't hear me, let me know in the comments. So anyway, we, um, I was getting ready to start high school. My parents wanted us to have a, uh, I'm not going to, I'm going to lose all my words here. Anyway, they wanted me to have a stable high school experience and they wanted my younger sister to have a stable high school experience too. So they, they thought it would be best if we left Germany and moved back to the States. And my sister and I kicking and screaming about that. We didn't want to go. Um, my dad had several job opportunities. We, um, one in um, Pueblo, Colorado, one at Fort Leonard Wood in Missouri, and the other one at, thank you, Nikki, uh, one at Whiteman Air Force Base in Missouri. And then, um, so they thought we would move to one of those places. 
both my parents are originally from Missouri. My dad is from Perryville, which is just south of St. Louis. And my mom uh, originally was from Arkansas, but graduated high school and college in Missouri. So my grandparents, all my grandparents lived in Missouri. And then my parents were really pushing for Missouri. But my dad, to try to seem fair, stuck all of the locations in a hat. And my sister and I said, well, if you're going to put, if we're going to draw out of a hat to choose where we move to, then we really want to uh, stay in Germany. So you need to put that option in the hat too. <laughs> so they did. And I think my dad pulled stay in Germany out of the hat more than um, move back to the States, but they were pretty set. We were moving back to the States. So when I was 14, we left Germany, we moved to Sedalia, Missouri. Uh, my parents thought that it would be good for us to um, be away from the military environment. They uh, wanted to be away from base. They wanted us to have stable friends who were around all the time. When we were, you know, going to, we went to American schools in Germany and the kids were always moving. They were all the military kids and they were moving. Every year we had to start over with friends and they thought it would be better for us if we uh, had a more stable friend friend base. So, so we ended up in Sedalia, Missouri, which I didn't like at the time. Uh, I've come to appreciate it. It's a great little, it's a great town. Uh, it's about the size of Muscatine, Iowa, maybe 25, 30,000 people in its area. Um, and it's a beautiful town. I was glad to leave, <laughs> but I always enjoy going back and um, seeing what's there. So we ended up in Sedalia. Uh, somehow I met a gal from Wilton, Iowa, which is where I live now. We had to be good friends. We were just graduated from high school and through her I met Dan, my husband now, um, who was off to the Air Force Academy and we had a long distance relationship for a long time and then he uh, <laughs> he graduated from the Air Force Academy and we got married. That's pretty much the short story there. So while he was active duty Air Force, we lived all over. We started out in Sacramento, California. We went to Japan next, which was amazing. Um, Japan is a great, was a really cool experience. Um, anytime you travel somewhere where you can't read the signs, you look completely different. Like I was I'm this tall, I'm 5'9", so I'm this tall blonde woman with all these short little Asian people in Japan and I really stood out like a sore thumb. For someone who would rather blend in, it was difficult for me at first. Um, but I feel like traveling to these places where uh, you don't know the culture, you don't know the language, you don't know the people, it just, it makes you really appreciate and under get an, an understanding for the differences. Like, I think it helps me be tolerant and interested in other people and accepting and really wanting to, you know, um, learn about how other people in other societies live and have an appreciation for that. So that was, um, living in Japan was, was a really amazing experience. And if you've never been to a country where you can't even read the signs because they don't use our alphabet. I really recommend it. It is so eye-opening to be somewhere where you're in the minority and um, and you just don't, you just you just feel a little awkward. I think we all need to feel awkward sometimes to really uh, uh, appreciate and understand and want to work well with people. So. Um, as is the case, I think, um, after, oh, the grass is always greener, I think is what I want to say. So after Japan, we moved to, we were shortly, we were for a short time in Alabama for a few weeks while my husband did some training, and then we were in Arizona, and we went to grad school at Arizona State University, which was a lot of fun. And I ended up getting a degree, a degree, a master's degree in uh, linguistics and English linguistics. It was um, very interesting to learn how, how people learn second languages, how we can um, help people who are trying to learn English as a second language. And, um, and that was a good experience. We didn't have kids yet, so it was a lot of fun. <laughs> I'm really rambling. <laughs> anyway, after we both graduated with our master's degrees. We moved to Colorado and I started teaching 
um, composition, English composition at community colleges and having babies. So we started having children in Colorado. I had two kids very quickly. And then my husband got out of the Air Force um, because the grass is always greener. We thought it would be, you know, I grew up traveling all the time and being away from family and in a foreign country. Um, my husband ha came from this very stable family in Iowa. He went and knew the, all the same kids from the time he was, you know, just a baby until he graduated from high school. And I thought that looked like a really, like that was my goal for raising kids. I thought they would love that stability to be close to their grandparents, their aunts and uncles and cousins. And so um, Dan, we decided that he would get out of the Air Force and we came to Iowa, which is where we've been since 2006. So we moved to Iowa with two kids. My, our oldest daughter was 17 months old when we came, or no, nah, she was about 20 months old. She's about a year and a half, and we had a, a newborn baby. So we moved to Iowa with two young kids. Now my kids are 16, 14, 12, and 10. So we've been here for <laughs> been here for a long time. Uh, we settled in Wilton, which is where Dan is from, and um, we started a construction company. And then the bottom fell out of the market, and we've you know, had to dig ourselves out of the hole and come back to, to life, which we have done. Um, in that time, I started blogging. So I originally started my blog, Simplify Live Love, um, because I have been reading the How to Save Money blogs, you know, Money Saving Mom, and I don't even remember all of them, but um, we were at that point really trying to work hard and save money, and they were very inspiring. So I thought I would start my own blog. Um, for the promise of free Christmas cards. I think I got free Christmas cards for one of the first blog posts I work and that's <laughs> that's, that's the honest to gosh truth for why I started blogging initially. That transitioned into writing about recipes, gardening. Um, our youngest daughter has uh, hip dysplasia. I started writing about our experiences dealing with a child with hip dysplasia um, and then eventually we started traveling more when um, at first, when we came to Iowa, we weren't traveling as much as we had in the past. But then after all the kids were born, um, I started getting in the car and driving to visit people. Dan couldn't come along, um, but I could go. And so I would load all the kids in the car. We would drive to visit a friend in upstate New York, or we would drive to visit a friend, uh, really good friends in Florida, or we would drive down to Sedalia all the time to see my parents who were there. So we were always on the road. Um, we were homeschooling, we were looking for ways to expose our kids to the greater world, and, um, and I started writing a little bit about those experiences. Not enough, but a little bit. So the blog has changed, I feel like every, every year I'm reinventing, what am I doing over there? Uh, what am I doing with the blog? It's always something different. Um, but I have settled really on uh, healthy recipes and then the gardening, um, chickens, and, and family travel. Those are where my passions lie. So that's pretty much what, what I am focusing mostly on now. Um, I am most active on Instagram. That's my favorite platform. Uh, Love-hate relationship. And um, because of meeting people and going to conferences. I got this amazing opportunity to write a book. Um, last year I wrote my first book, which is How to Raise Chickens for Me. It's a pretty funny topic for me, honestly. I have, you know, I have done it, but killing chickens is not really all that fun. Um, the satisfaction that comes from raising your own food, from being able to put something on a table that you have grown or raised from, uh, you know, and everything pretty much came from from me. I, I think that's wonderful. So, um, writing the book was a lot of fun. I took every picture in the book, um, and then of course raised the chickens, and 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 that ironically enough came about two ways actually. First, from Sarah Brewers because she encouraged me to work with a chicken hatchery, Hoover's Hatchery in Iowa. And because of them, I raised meat chickens for the first time. And then second, from conferences. 
So I have um, gone to a lot of conferences, and one of the conferences that I have gone to almost every year that it has been held is called uh, ShiftCon. It's for green living enthusiasts, um, healthy living, um, and uh, you know, reducing chemicals and that sort of stuff. So that's one of the main conferences that I've been to, and I met another blogger there who wrote a chicken book, and then because of the connection with her, I got hooked up with the um, with the publishing company, and they reached out to me, and I wrote the book. So um, that was never really, honestly, on my radar. I didn't know about writing a book like that, um, but it was a lot of fun. It was a good experience, and I would probably probably do it again. So the book is part How to Raise Chickens for Meat part memoir, a little bit about my grandma and the farm background my dad came from. And then um, also it has over it has a 30 recipes in it too, which I made, developed. Um, uh, Nikki Omohundro, there's a recipe from her in there for beer, beer chicken, beer can chicken on the grill. Um, so thank you, Nikki, for that recipe. And, um, but with all the others I did myself, um, photographed them all, and the book was uh, so satisfying to finally get that in my hands. So, um, let's see. So now we're in Iowa. I've written the book, and um, we are always traveling. <laughs> People ask me a lot, how do you travel with four kids? How do you have animals with... Um, when you're traveling so much, how do you have a garden? Um, and it takes a lot of work, uh, but somehow we managed to figure it out. We have people help us when we're gone. Um, sometimes my parents, sometimes a niece or nephew, or um, sometimes uh, construction workers from our, our company, Oak Tree Homes, will help out with the animals that we leave behind. We have chickens. Uh, one rooster, mostly hens, one rooster. We have two guineas, which are very loud and obnoxious. Two peacocks, they're new. Uh, I lost my peacock, James, um, over the winter. He died. It was uh, really sad. One of the, I mean, we lose a lot of animals living and letting them free range, but the peacock was, was a pretty hard loss. And we have three jerk geese. Uh, they are jerks. <laughs> they really are. And, um, and then we have a, a ducks. And um, we have two great Pyrenees dogs who are amazing. They help keep the predators away, but they're not foolproof. Um, we have six cats because my eldest daughter keeps sneaking more cats home. So we have, what else do we have? A fish and rabbits. We also have 4-H rabbits. Oh, and we have three sheep. And on Saturday, we're bringing home three goats. So goats will be a new experience for us. Um, there's always something strange going on here. It's uh, pretty funny, pretty funny. So, so there are a lot of things that we leave behind when we go travel. And sometimes it'll be just me and the kids and Dan will be here to take over or sometimes uh, Dan will go and you know we'll be all here. But, but when we all go, we really have to coordinate taking care of the animals while we're gone. That's our... That's one of our biggest challenges, except for now that we can't travel at all. That's a pretty big challenge, too. We, um, as a result of COVID, uh, we weren't able to go on our spring break trip. We had tickets to Spain for the whole family. We were so excited. The kids really got in on helping us plan that trip. And um, when we bought the tickets, uh, we used mostly airline points. Um, which we got through this great, I'm gonna have, I'll have to look it up and let you know later if you're interested, but there is a, a, a platform you can sign up to where they tell you about the different um, travel hacking, basically, which credit cards give you the best re rewards. And we ended up getting one with our business. It's pretty easy to, to charge a lot of money with a construction company. So, so we got, we racked up some pretty substantial rewards very quickly and, um, and we redeemed them for six tickets to Spain. And when when we hit go on those, I thought, I hope this COVID thing doesn't come back to bite us, but it sure did, it really did. So we're still waiting. Those tickets were on thin air and um, we finally got a hold of the airline. We're still trying to get reimbursed for them. I don't know if we will. Uh, right now, the way it stands, we can rebook 
uh, through the end of November, I think, but I don't know that, I just don't know. I don't know that we'll be traveling by then. Um, we'll see. Anyway, so we lost out on that then. With our construction company, we travel a lot. We're part of a, a builder group, um, a, a peer group of non-competing builders from around the country, and twice a year we get together with them face-to-face. -face. Usually it's um, where the builders live. We learn about their business and we see how, you know, what all they're doing and meet their employees and their customers and help them make their um their construction company better. They're, they're all remodelers. And um, we were supposed to go to Seattle for that. And that didn't, that was in April. We always travel in April and then in the fall. And they're really fun trips. It's just my husband and I and the kids stay home. Uh, it's nice that they're getting older because it's also hard to arrange childcare for four kids. When we were homeschooling, it was even more difficult. Now that the kids are in school, it's not quite as hard to get someone to watch them, but it's still challenging. The nice thing is they're getting older and, and more responsible and they don't need someone taking care of them 24 seven. So that's nice. And we always stay in a really luxurious hotel and eat great food. And, and those trips are a lot of fun. Um, they're some of my favorites. And then, um, and then with the family, with the four kids, we do a lot of driving. So we've road tripped. I've taken the kids from Iowa to Boston and then from Iowa to Seattle. Actually, when we went to Seattle, my husband went with us to Seattle, but I brought them all four home alone. And um, we did this amazing trip through, um, well, we drove all the way across Iowa. Then we went up to South Dakota and we drove all the way across South Dakota. And then we went up to um, Whitefish, Montana, which is amazing. Uh, and then from Whitefish, we went to, to Seattle. And then when we, my husband flew home, he couldn't stay as long. And while we were in Seattle, we went to, uh, went to some national parks. We went to Mount Rainier. We went up to Cascades. It was just such a great time. My sister and her husband have this beautiful Airbnb, or they had an Airbnb uh, in their house, but I don't know when they will open it back up again. They've had to close that down. Um, and then... I drove home with the kids by myself from Seattle all the way back to Iowa, which was interesting. So we went from Seattle to uh, Bozeman, and then from Bozeman we went down through Yellowstone. We did this day, we did this day trip through Yellowstone. It was so funny. I stopped in to uh, ask the, you know, talk to the um, the. The park rangers, that's the word I'm looking for. I stopped in it to talk to the park rangers to figure out, you know, what can you do in a day at Yellowstone, which is really a joke. But hey, if you have a day, take the day. Um, I would always recommend you use whatever time you have for your trips. Um, we had a day, so we, we, we did as much as we could in a day, which wasn't much. There was a lot of, um, a lot of construct, road construction. It took forever to get from one point to the other, and we drove in from from the north entrance, um, the main, the, where they have the big uh, monument to Teddy Roosevelt. Um, and then we drove out to Cody, Wyoming. And we got into Cody right before 10 o'clock at night. We were up in Adam that morning. Um, and that was the reason for a big multi-generational camping trip we did the next year with my whole family. My parents came in an RV and we took a tent and my sister and her family met us there uh, with a tent as well. And that was, um, it's much better if you have longer time to spend places, to take the longer time, but hey, we gotta do what we gotta do. And if it's a day, it's a day. So that was probably one of our um, favorite trips, uh, except for both of those road trips. Um, we've taken the kids to Germany one time to see how I grew up, to meet my friends. So the, I, I think I told you in the beginning, I learned to speak German when I was pretty young. I speak German, or I did speak German with a native accent. I fooled all the Germans into thinking I was German. And now they just think that I might have a German parent. <laughs> because when you don't use a language, you really do you lose it. Um, and so my German is rusty, but, uh, but I still can have, I can still talk about most anything as long as I can throw in an English word every now and again, which is pretty easy to do in Germany because everyone speaks English or a lot of people speak English. But um, that was, that trip was probably one of my favorites with the kids just to, my youngest daughter was six at the time, which is how old I have been when I moved to Germany. Uh, and um, 
to see her, my, my friend, my German friend had also a, a six year old daughter to see the two of them try to navigate the language barrier like she and I had had to do when we were that age, it was really moving. It, it, was, it was the cutest thing. It really was fantastic to see my kids go through a little bit of what I went through when we had gone to overseas to, to live in a new country. Um, anyway, I have been rambling and rambling. I would love to know if you have any questions. Um, I, I've been blogging since about 2010. Um, my, I have so many embarrassing posts on my blog, um, that I've been working on redoing, uh, new photography, making sure the recipes actually have all the steps. I mean, it's pretty pathetic what <laughs> some of the stuff I have from the beginning, but, um, but I would love to know if you have any questions for me, um, anything about you know, traveling with four kids, uh, any social media, blogging. I am an open book. I will tell it. I will tell you. I, I don't, there aren't any secrets. I know from our builder group that the more open and honest uh, people in a certain profession are with each other, the better it is for everyone. We all bring each other up. Um, so I am always happy to answer money questions, anything really. I, um, nothing is off limits for me. So let's see if there aren't any questions. What else about me? That's about it, you guys. The whole grass is greener thing is real. I mean, when I was little, I was jealous of people who were near their you know, near their families and had them all around. And that was a big motivator for us to, to come to Iowa to raise our kids around family. And, and it's hard sometimes. I mean, I wouldn't trade it, but definitely having been able to travel as a kid, go everywhere and, you know, have early memories of climbing the Leaning Tower of Pisa and driving around an old VW bus with my parents and, you know, getting lost in ski slopes and in the Alps. Um, there's some fantastic memories and sometimes I'm sad that my kids can't, they don't have that, but they do have their family close by. Uh, my parents have moved to Iowa now. Dan's parents are close by. They have aunts and uncles and cousins and, um, and, the, and, and they, have the stability that I never had as a child. So I am very thankful for the opportunities of traveling. And I feel like travel really opens up so many doors. Um, I've been chatting with another, uh, a black family travel blogger who's questioning, you know, the current events. And I, it's just so sad. I really feel like travel helps people helps people be empathetic and, and, uh, understanding of the privilege and, uh, you know, other things that we have in our lives. So I'm just hoping that, uh, as this COVID stuff goes away and we're back on the road soon, I've missed out on a, you know, a couple of big trips already, the trip to Spain and the trip to Seattle. And then I had some blog trips in the works that are both canceled. Um, sadly, I hope we can reschedule those things and, um, I'm looking forward to when we can get beyond this and get back to the way it was mostly. I have to tell you, I do really enjoy, I mean, with four kids, we are on the go all the time, all the sports and running from the time school is out to the time we go to bed. Um, it's been, it's been pretty nice. I cannot lie, not having anything to do. We've been very productive around the homestead. We have managed to get projects done that have been needing attention for a while. So, um, any questions? Well, I will check out the, um, the, if people leave comments here, if you're watching after we turn this off, if anybody has questions after the fact, please um, let me know. 
I'll drop some links here to where you can find me at my email address. I'm happy to chat with people about traveling in Europe with kids, traveling, you know, driving with kids, anything really, blogging, the Instagram, what, like I said, is my favorite. Um, so with that said, I think I will end. And um, again, if you do have questions, go ahead and put them in, the, in this uh, live stream, um, whatever it is. <laughs> and I will be watching for the next few days. I'll answer uh, whatever if you tag me. So uh, go ahead and tag me so I don't miss them. But I hope you guys have a nice day. Uh, keep up with the planning and uh, traveling around, whatever you can do. And um, thank you for your time. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you, Lisa. And I hope everyone stays healthy and uh, we get past this soon. All right. See you later, guys. Bye-bye.